Welcome to another episode of the Understanding Crypto series by Thomas Plunkett. Today, we're going to take a look at compiling Solidity to Ethereum Virtual Machine bytecode. This video and these slides are available under the Creative Commons license. So let's talk about uh, compiling a Solidity source file to EVM bytecode. So there's several different ways to do this. You know, for example, we can use uh, the Remix compiler. Um, you can use uh, Solidity compiler on the command line, uh, Sol C, and so on. So generating the raw opcode stream of a Solidity source file um, is pretty easy, straightforward to do. Um, if you're using Sol C, you can put the uh, the opcodes command line option to do it. Uh, the opcode stream will leave out some information. So if you want to get all the information, you should use the ASM option. Um, you know, for example, if we want to compile um, example.sol, uh, what we might use is the command we show here. We see sol c uh, dash o bytecode directory and then the specific opcodes uh, followed by example so or the example below it to get all the information with ASM. We say sol c dash o bytecode directory and then double dash ASM followed by example so. And if we want to get the, the uh, bytecode binary, we might use um, sol c o bytecode directory bin example so. All right, so that, that gives us how we would produce the various files for our programs. Um, here's a look at um, what um, our out, output file might look like. So let's say we're using a very simple uh, Solidity file, example.solidity, uh, that just is a contract example, um, and it's got one function. Um, so all this contract does is it holds a persistent state variable representing the message sender, which is going to be stored in a variable uh, of type address, which we call contract owner. So in this particular case, let's look at the opcode that's being produced and what the EVM bytecode instructions actually look like for that contract. So if we were to open uh, example the example opcode file in a text editor, we would see a lot of instructions that look kind of like um, you know, assembly language, but really it's the instructions from the instruction set we took a look at in a previous lecture. You know, we're seeing things like push and caller and jump and multiply and add and not and ors and so on. Now, if we compile the example contract we took a look at with the ASM option, we get a slightly easier to read file. Um, so, you know, and uh, we include that, and that easier to read file is actually in the textbook. So you can take a look at it in the textbook. Um, but let's evaluate some of the first few uh, operation codes that are in the example. So we've got a push followed by some data 0x60, followed by a push, followed by you know another hexadecimal number 0x40, followed by a store and a call value. So this EVM instruction uh, is going to take a single byte following the operation code and the program code as a literal value. You know, our little value is, is going to be hexadecimal value 60, and then it's going to push 60 onto the stack. Um, and so you could push a really large number of up to 32 bytes in size on the stack. But in this case, we're just pushing the number 60 onto the stack. And then we're going to push another number 40 onto the stack. Now, once we have pushed both uh, 60 and 40 onto the stack, next up is a, is a, a M store, which is a memory store operation that is supposed to save a value to the Ethereum virtual machine's memory. Uh, memory store takes two arguments and it takes those two arguments from the stack. And so basically it's popping both arguments off the stack. And then what happens is, is it takes the uh, first argument, which is the address of the word in memory where the value to be saved will be put. 
So we had 40 at the top of the stack because 40 was the second number that was put on the stack. So 40 comes off and is used as a memory address. And then the second argument is 60. And so that's going to be the value that will be stored at that memory address of 40. Um, and after the mstore oper operation is done, we use both 60 and 40 and they're off the stack. Uh, but we then stored 60 in a memory location uh, of 0x40. The next operation code that we have on this list is called call value, which is an environmental operation code that pushes onto the top of the stack the amount of ether measured in way sent with the message call that initiated the execution. And so we can continue to walk through all of these operation codes here and walk through what they do uh, based on the instruction set we covered in a previous lecture. But, um, you know, that's something we're going to leave as an ex exercise for the student. Instead, what we're going to do now is we're going to talk about contract deployment code. So there is an important but subtle difference between the code that's used when creating and deploying a new contract in the Ethereum platform and the code of the contract itself. So in order to create a new contract, a special transaction is needed that has its two fields set to the special zero hexadecimal address and its data field is set to the contract's initiation code. Uh, when such a contract creation transaction is processed, the code for the new contract account is not the code in the data field of the transaction. Instead, an Ethereum virtual machine is instantiated with the code in the data field of the transaction loaded into the program's code's uh, read-only memory, and then the output of the transaction that deployment code is taken as the code for the new contract account. This is so that new contracts can be programmatically initialized using the Ethereum world state at the time of deployment, setting values in the contract storage and even sending ether or creating further new contracts. So when compiling a contract offline, for example, uh, using uh, soul C on the command line, you either get the deployment bytecode or the runtime bytecode. The deployment bytecode is used for every aspect of the initialization of a new contract account, including the bytecode that will actually end up being executed when transactions call this new contract, i.e. the runtime bytecode, and the code to initialize everything based on the contract's constructor. The runtime bytecode, on the other hand, is exactly the bytecode that ends up being executed when the new contract is called and nothing more. Uh, it doesn't include the bytecode needed to initialize the contract during deployment. So this has been a short look at um, you know, how to deploy contracts, uh, bytecode, and some of the distinctions between deployment bytecode and runtime bytecode. Uh, tune in next time when we're going to continue our discussion of bytecode uh, by actually disassembling some Ethereum virtual machine bytecode to get a better understanding of how high-level solidity acts in the Ethereum virtual machine.